that really were, oh god, okay, it's hard to talk and think right now, but, oh, 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 no, oh, there's a spider! Welcome back to another episode of Low Space House One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into an arcade style rhythm game on the Wii that has a lot of influences of the classic gaming era. Now we have Bit Trip Complete here, but we're actually going to be playing Bit Trip Core, which is the second Bit Trip game in the Bit Trip series. Ironically enough, or interestingly enough, it was actually in development before any of the other entries. So even though it was the second game to come out, uh, it was kind of the first in some ways. I love, by the way, the sound effects and like the really low resolution text and everything like that. Uh, this is actually like really cool so far. So, okay, I do have a cursor. It is the Wii, so everything is needlessly controlled through motion rather than the D-pad. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop in here and see what we got. Bit Trip Core, continuing the Bit Trip Saga in the retro arcade style. I Just the sound effects, the graphics, everything is so cool. This game was actually inspired by an Atari 2600 game known as Cosmic Arc. Uh, so it sort of is like the visuals, you know, the whole Bit Trip series has the visuals of an Atari game, uh, but this one has the gameplay style of a Guitar Hero game, you know, as was as was popular back in the early 2000s. Guitar Hero was big. Everyone wanted to do like rhythm games and stuff. So I don't know what I'm being asked to do here. Um, oh, to activate. Okay, sure. Let's initiate. How do we actually start here oh my am i doing it am i supposed to just oh that's how you start the game you capture a dot okay um so i don't know is this going to be the wait what happened oh there we go oh that is so weird you need skills to get through the the main menu i don't even 100 percent know what's going on this is crazy uh, but is this going to be the Atari 2600's answer to the Guitar Hero craze? I mean, Atari was well and fully bankrupt slash gone from the gaming market by the time Guitar Hero came, so... Um, oh, although, you know what? I would like to see... I would like to see, you know, people are always making new games for old systems. I don't know what's going on there. That was a weird, crazy dream. Uh, people are always making new games for old systems. I would love to see somebody port Guitar Hero to the Atari 2600. That would be uh, amazing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm speaking to the rhythm of the dots here. I can't help it. I don't know what's going on in the background either. We're like, you know, going through the world of Tron or something like that. So yeah, this is it. This is the game. You, uh, in, in classic Atari 2600 style, it is you versus dots. And you have to fight the dots. I totally see... Sorry, I, I, I'm, like, having to concentrate here. Oh, God. I see the appeal of games... I'm missing stuff like this. I also have a bomb, apparently. Oh, God, I'm missing things. They're going... They're fast... They're sending the fast dots. They, they started to send the fast dots at me. Okay, up, down, up, down. Left, right. Left, right. Have we lost? Wait, we've gone into full Atari mode. This is like uh, when Neo sees the Matrix. Oh, what's happening? Okay, just bomb everything. I think I just wiped out the screen. We we have we can see the Atari behind the world. Let's, can we bomb everything else again? Oh no, we totally can't. Oh, we're missing all these. Is this a bonus stage? What's happening? Oh, I'm fighting off. Uh, I'm I'm fighting off something. Like notice the frame around the screen is getting bigger. I'm fighting something off. Sound effects are coming out of the Wii Mote. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'll try and hold the Wiimote close to the uh, to the microphone. Uh, I got a game over though. Press the two button. All right, I don't know what that was, but I like the aesthetics. I like the sound effects. I like the feel. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We were killing dots or something or saving them maybe. I don't know. I don't know what was happening with those dots. We actually enter our name. Yeah, okay, if you can read this funky text, you can enter your name. I'm going to do it because because I want to, because also it reminds me of playing an arcade game, and 
I really love playing modern games that have old school feels. Even if the gameplay is modern, if you give me like an old school feel, you make me feel like I'm entering my score on like a high scoreboard and like, you know, a pizza parlor. It just makes me want to play the game more, you know. Um, okay, let's give this another shot. I thought for today, one thing that could be kind of fun is we'll try Bit Trip Core here because Bit Trip Core is the game that is actually in the book, the Thousand and One book. Oh my God. It's like an Illuminati of Atari avatars that are haunting my nightmares, compelling me to assault these dots in this virtual world. Um, but Bit Trip Core is the one that the authors of the Thousand and One book thought, you know what? This game deserves to be in the Thousand and One book. So they, they went ahead and put this game in. Um... And, you know, we'll talk about whether we think that's appropriate at the end of today's video. However, I, I did think that since this game is a little basic and knowing myself, you know, not to not to not have confidence or anything, I, I thought I might have trouble getting too far in this game. And so I thought maybe we check out a few of the other bit trip games, because to be honest, I have like never played them. And apparently every bit trip game has like a different genre. Uh, like some bit trip games are platformers, some are shooters. Oh god. Oh yeah, we got it. Some are platformers, some are shooters. They're just all sorts of different kinds of gameplay. I think they all typically have a rhythm element to them. Oh god, I have to talk like this. I'm sorry. When I start to talk in rhythm, it is involuntary. Like there's nothing I can do. I just... I have to, to speak that way. Uh, otherwise, my brain, I just won't be able to, like, talk. This is like an advanced game of Simon. This is like if Simon had, like, real stakes, you know, besides bragging rights. Boom! We're getting the big dots now. Those are so satisfying to destroy. Oh, we passed the level, son! Oh, no, we didn't. <laughs> I'm getting way ahead of myself. I think I'm made way better at this game than I actually am. Oh, who's getting it now? Um, oh no, lots of bad things are happening. Oh man, the dots stopped exploding. So I guess as, as you do worse in this game, you get less visual effects. When I was doing really well, the dots would explode when I got them. Now they just disappear. But yeah, anyway. Um, it is cool that, uh... The Atari inspired these developers to go ahead and create a game with their uh, sort of style. Um, and it kind of got me thinking, actually. I was kind of thinking about how, like, like, okay, don't take this the wrong way, Atari fans. But here's my question for today. Is the Atari 2600 style sort of something that is pleasing to the eye? Is it something that we want to emulate? Here, here's my thinking. I, uh, oh god, things are coming way too fast. It's really, this is a really hard game to, uh, talk over and play at the same time. I don't know if you can hear the sound effects coming from my control. I just lost. Damn. All right, we'll give this one more shot, and then we'll check out some of the other bit trip games real quick. But here's my, th here's my theory for today. Atari 2600 games, the style, the sound effects, and everything, 100% nostalgic. I totally get that. I am loving the the really crappy, low-resolution text and, like, the really basic sort of old-school sound effects and all that in this game. It's cool. I like it. Um, and I think this game actually, to its credit, does a really good job of paying homage to the Atari, but also modernizing it a bit. And certainly, I do think that this style of graphics is something that is uh that that is neat and you could see modern indie games sort of emulating and people would like it uh you know in the same way that i like this however if you look at most indie games that try to capture sort of a retro feel they're always copying like the nes the super nes they're copying the sega genesis that sort of 8 to 16 bit era is i think the sweet spot where most people if they're going to create a modern indie game that sort of has a retro homage, they aim for that. And so it kind of got me thinking, like, did Atari 2600 games ever look good? Like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, when I was a kid and I saw an Atari 2600 game, 100%, I wanted to play it. I loved it. You know, the Atari was great. I loved video games, even as, like, a little, little. But I'm kind of thinking, like, 
did I think the games looked good or were they just like whatever, you know? In the same way that like I played Tiger handheld electronic devices as a kid. I don't think I ever thought those looked good, but I was just so desperate for games that I would literally play anything. If you carved a game on a ham sandwich, I would have played it. I don't know how that would work, but I'm just saying. Um, anyway, <laughs> getting away from weird sandwich based metaphors. So yeah, for the Atari, you know, does do Atari games look good or are they just like incredibly dated and uh, the kinds of things that, you know, we we we'd much rather if we're going to emulate old retro styles, we'd rather go for like the 16, maybe even the 32 bit era. But the, uh, you know, the I don't know what you call the Atari, the two bit era uh, is an era that maybe we could like forget. <laughs> maybe we could kind of like go. I don't know. Um, again, I'm not saying that Atari games aren't uh, appealing. I'm not saying that Atari games don't give me lots of nostalgia and I don't like them. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, if you look at the sort of eras that people do really sort of like to return to, I think it's typically more the 8 and 16 bit era. Now, that could be my own personal bias, because honestly, uh, for anyone who watches this channel, you guys know that Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and DOS games were what I basically grew up on. So I am admittedly a little biased. And that's why I'm actually putting this question out to you guys. Like, what do you guys think of the Atari 2600? How does it hold up today? Do you think, uh, you know, indie games that try to emulate Atari graphics are like being smart about it? Or is it like better to do like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis? style graphics is that where the money is you know um and even if that's you know what even if even if most people even if the general public prefers nintendo and super nintendo level graphics um i think we could still disagree and say you know what i think the atari actually holds up pretty well so yeah, i'm just kind of interested in what you guys think of like the era of atari graphics um like even though this game honestly uh you like you can clearly see the atari homage to it Obviously, the graphics are severely enhanced to the point where uh, this would never run on the Atari. Like it just th this, you know, this would never run on the Atari. Um, but I feel like occasionally, you know, I'll play like modern indie games. It totally, I think, could have run on the Super Nintendo. They had the right like Super FX chip or something like Shovel Knight or the Messenger you know, or what is it? Chrome Hounds? Not Chrome Hounds. That's a that's an actual game. Chrome something. Uh, Blood and Chrome. There, there's some indie game. Oh, God, we're losing again. Oh, God. Uh, this is where it really looks like Atari. Like this could be on the Atari. Oh, look, there's dots that have like intentions. They like move back and forth. That's interesting. Look at these guys. Boom. Oh, God, get out of here, dots. No, dots. Come and die. I'm gonna die, Dot. Oh, these guys are trying to, like, psych me out. Oh, you bastards! Oh, it worked! Oh, those guys have a uh, rhythm! Oh, my God. All right, we lost. We lost. Um, so, Bit Trip Core here is really, like, a basic casual game. Um, it's, it's got levels and stuff, and there's some different elements to it. But, obviously, we're kind of maxing out at, you know, Jay's capabilities today. So, uh, maybe we'll check out some of the other Bit Trip games real quick. Uh, but I'll just leave that Atari topic as a big open question mark for you guys. You know, uh, again, this is just my opinion, just my thoughts. And I'm certainly not saying I don't love Atari. Don't get that idea. If you get that idea, you haven't been listening very closely. I'm just sort of pondering, um, you know, what kind of old school graphics really bring the nostalgia and want to bring us back to games. Um, so it's just my thinking. Anyway, let's go see what some of these other Bit Trip games are. Okay, there's a bunch. We're not going to try them all, but I am interested in this runner game. So let's give this one a shot. And then maybe we'll try Beat because that's the original game. So I think that one is either a rhythm game or a first person brawler where you have to beat someone literally to a bloody pulp. But I guess we will see. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet it is the brawler game. In, in, intensely violent, in, intensely violent, you know, banned in Germany and Australia due to, you know, graphic violence and hardcore nudity and use of drugs and stuff. Um, so that's what I'm thinking the first bit trip game was, but we'll start with Runner, which I assume is either an infinite runner or maybe like a Mario style game. So we have three zones. I love the graphics and the sound. This is so cool. 
This actually kind of reminds me, not the graphic, I mean, not the sound or anything, the music. This reminds me a little bit of Pitfall now, actually. Which, uh, again, going back to the Atari, real briefly, I do want to move on from this topic, but... I would actually say I think Pitfall is like the best looking Atari game or one of the best looking ones that I can come up with off the top of my head. Um, you know, I just spent all this time ragging on Atari graphics and stuff, but uh, OK, we can jump. That is our one move. We jump. That is it. Oh, we just got Atari style uh, gold. So that's cool. Or not Atari Pitfall style gold. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, even as a kid, actually, I always thought that Pitfall looked, like, pretty solid. Uh, it, it, you know, never blew me away the way Mario did, but it's, like, it definitely was, like, yeah, like, this is... It's, it stood out amongst the other Atari games, which are often either paddles in space or dots in space. There's a lot of space in Atari, uh, basically because in Atari, if you don't have to draw a background, that saves you a whole bunch of computer power. So games like Pitfall... Or Frogger, which actually also looks quite good on the Atari. Um, you know, those were going above and beyond. Anyway, we just passed a level, which was totally cool. That was way easier than the dock game. Oh my god, speaking of Pitfall, we are literally in Pitfall. This game gets a solid thumbs up from me just for the nostalgia factor alone. This is kind of like just basically Mario Go, you know, like that Mario game that they made a while back, only less less uh, advanced. But it's almost better because of the uh, retro feel. And, and the sound effects when it counts up, it's so good. I, I kind of want to keep playing this now. So Bit Trip, I'm not entering my initials because it just takes too long. But Bit Trip Runner here is not actually in the 1001 book. The only game in the 1001 book is Bit Trip uh, core, which we were, you know, just playing. Oh, look, there's pits now. What is happening? The world's getting more advanced and scary. Yeah, we just got a bandage cross or something. I don't know. It's like robots and guns in the background. Little dot man here, little pixel boy is just going to run off to victory. Oh my God, he died on a ledge. Wait, we get an extra shot? Maybe those, uh, maybe the, uh, whatever bandage things we were getting were like extra lives or checkpoints or something or mega i don't know what that actually even does so you can't make any mistakes in this in some ways this is like way easier than a normal platformer than mario and way more basic and in other ways oh god like areas like that are like actually a little tricky what happened i didn't even see what happened there did my old eyes blink and this young millennial game got away from me? I don't know. <laughs> technically, just for the record, technically I'm a millennial. If you actually look at the birth dates of millennials, I'm a millennial. I think I'm like the oldest millennial you can be. But technically, I want it on the record somewhere that I'm technically sort of young. I'm not really, but, you know, by the definition of a millennial, I count. <laughs> so I'm taking it. The older you get, the more you cling to anything that indicates you're young. You know, I remember when I was a, when I was younger, the idea of getting carded at the LCBO when you went to buy booze. The LCBO is in Canada where you buy booze. Um, this stands for Liquor Control Board of Ontario, for anyone watching from elsewhere in the world. But I remember going to the LCBO and people were, would always get mad if they got carded. Um, I mean, rightfully so, we were all just sort of youngish and just recently able to drink. But I remember people like, you know, didn't want to get carded and they wanted to look old and stuff. But and it was a thing. It was actually a thing, too. I remember like having some female friends. Oh, you can slide. That's a new ability. And if you uh, went to the LCBO with them, you would get carded. But if you went by yourself, you wouldn't. And I remember the girls were always like upset that it's like they're like, why? We, we're not kids. We don't look that young. Uh, but nowadays, I think everyone wants to be carded. Everyone I know, if they get carded, they're like, oh my god, I was carded. They're like, that is so awesome. I'm young. I'm young again. So, it is It is the great, uh, not mystery, but the great irony of life, how young people want to be old and old people want to be young. There should be a machine. Someone should invent a machine that lets people trade. You just, you find someone who wants to be your age and, and you trade with them and you get to be young, they get to be old. And then, uh, jokes on them, once they're old, they're like, oh, crap, and then you're like, no tradebacks! And you just run off into the horizon, laughing maniacally. 
Of course, then you'd have like bedtimes and curfews and stuff, which would suck. The, the real thing that people want is to be young with none of the rules. People want to have an old mind by young body. That's how it, they want it to work. But uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, we're back on the uh, we're back on the pitfall level. All right. If we die here, I will switch to the last game because we don't want to spend. Oh, what the hell? I thought that was just background. That sucks. I totally could have do dodged that. I kind of want more chances just to play that uh, pitfall level. Actually, <laughs> that's all I really want to do. Crater Raider. I wonder if these levels like change it up at all because we've been pretty much in the same terrain for the whole. Uh... Oh God, the whole. Oh, what is that? UFO? I dodge. Okay, I tried to jump into it. Stupid me. Um, I wonder if the backgrounds like eventually change to different worlds or something like that, or if you only get this and the pitfall levels. But yeah, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about games this simple because like definitely I think the wrapping put around this game is absolutely amazing. Like the graphics, the sound, the care the developers went when they were developing this game to make it just as high quality as I could. Like this, as far as endless runners go, this, well, this isn't endless, but as far as runners go, this is as high quality as you can get. The music is like mixing in with what's happening in the, the world. Shoot, I should have ducked. What's happening in the world, everything. Like it's, it's, it's quality. You feel it as you play. At the same time, I kind of feel like, would I ever come home, you know, like sit in a basement by myself and spend four hours playing Bit Trip Runner? I think the answer is just no. I just would never do this. Even as a kid, I don't... Well, actually, maybe I would have played this if I was like, uh, if this was like, you know, early 90s or something. Um, even if the game didn't look this good, maybe I would have played it for the gameplay and tried to beat it. But I mean, because I guess it's not that different from a game like OutRun, where you're just sort of like racing on like a track by yourself, trying to see how far you can get. I don't know. I take it back. Maybe, maybe I'm being way too hard on this game. Um, definitely this feels like one of the higher quality sort of casual games you could uh, you could get But it's interesting sort of the outrun comparison. I just I just thought of that And it's sort of like yeah, like is out would outrun count as a casual game nowadays if it came out and No one had ever seen a game like it, you know People would call it an endless driver or whatever, you know, the rainbow behind me is actually really sweet That's so cool like follows you Yeah, like the the aesthetics and the care of this game are just Insane. Out of this world, one might say, which feels like a pun when you're playing a uh, space game. Yes, back to the level we really care about. Atari! I love Atari, man. This makes me actually want to go play Pitfall. Although I... Shit. <laughs> I suck. I will say... I will say that uh, every time I have gone back to play Pitfall, I have been disappointed. Like, in all... in brutal honesty. I like the idea of Pitfall, the Unstoppable Mr. Video. The level names are awesome, too. Uh, kick. Oh my god, you can kick? This game's getting more sophisticated. I'm having more fun with this than uh, Bit Trip Core that we were supposed to be playing today. I've gone, I've gone rogue, guys. I've gone rogue. I'm disobeying the book. There's going to be consequences for this. Um, but yeah, as cool as I like, as cool as I think Pitfall is, I find the actual game is like, eh, it's okay. Um, I always want there to be more to it, and then when I play it, I realize how simple it is, and I remember, and I'm like, all right, it's like it's fine. It's not a bad game. As certainly by Atari standards, it's like uh, you know one of the more interesting games I think. But I mean, even as far as Atari games go, I have definitely played some games that I got more into. And I'm not going to struggle to think of the names of those off the top of my head right now, because it will probably kill me, and I'm concentrating very hard here, actually. But, if you go and look at some of my more recent Atari 2600 games, I know there have been a couple that surprised me, and I was like, wow, like this is actually a good game, I'm getting into it, there's tension, um, and so on. So, uh, Pitfall, it, it looks sexy. Sexy looking Atari game, not going to lie. Not going to lie to you guys. But, uh... You know, it is what it is. Anyway, we're not going to die this time, stupidly. Well, oh God. Oh, we're just missing gold. That's okay. I'd rather miss gold and stay alive and see the end of... Oh, God, the fire got me. Uh, I want to pass one of those bonus levels. 
Okay. Let's let's do one more level here. Actually, let's not even. Uh oh, never mind. We've already started. Gonna I was gonna quit for the main menu so that we could just uh go on to the last game, but now that we've already started, let's let's give this one a proper send-off. Oh okay, we gotta go down. You have do you just have infinite lives, I wonder? Doesn't seem like there's any consequence to dying. I think the way you get the pitfall level two, by the way, is by getting all the gold. So it's sort of like you get one more chance, one more sweet taste of pitfall. Can't mess around. So we have to do this one, last one perfectly. Boom, boom, boom. Oh God, mixing it up. So it's, it, it is interesting because even though it is a running game, I 100% see the sort of like rhythm element to it. Like it is a rhythm game. Um, and it kind of makes me like think, like reevaluate, like what a rhythm game even is. You know, I said at the beginning of the video today that uh, Bit Trip here uh, was sort of a, a game that took, it basically was like the Atari 2600 mashed together with Guitar Hero. And I said, you know, as, as was the style at the time in the crap, in the kind of early 2000s, even the late, like, you know, 2010 and so on era. Everyone was just like nuts into Guitar Hero. Actually, I think Guitar Hero only came out in 2010. So like, I don't know what I'm saying with early 2000s, but you know, when Guitar Hero came out, people liked it. And all sorts of stuff, you know, when you have something popular, everyone tries to copy you. So everyone was, you know, trying to make Guitar Hero knockoffs and rhythm games, crap, and all sorts of like other stuff. And it became tiresome. And of course, you know, Guitar Hero and Rock Band's time has now faded and they're not really that popular uh, anymore. People have moved on, which is which is kind of interesting to me because it like I always contended that Guitar Hero was a bit of a fad, but people who defended it were like, no, no, it's like here to stay. But it's like, where is it now? You know, it's, it's gone. People have sort of tired of it, I guess, or got bored with it which is different from like many other games. It's not like people are tired of Mario. Like they're still making Mario games and they're like wildly successful oh, crap. Um, so yeah, I think, I think definitely there are some kinds of games where it's like sometimes the novelty of it just takes everyone by surprise and people like really get into it. And definitely that's what Rock Band seemed to me. But as I play this game, I'm starting to realize like this even though on the surface it's a runner, it feels Guitar Hero-y, Rock Band-y to me. And so it's making me kind of wonder, like, did Guitar Hero go away or did just the elements of it sprinkle into a bunch of other games? And also, were there other games before Rock Band and Guitar Hero that really were... Oh, God. Okay, it's hard to talk and think right now. But... Oh! Oh, oh no! Oh, there's a spider! We saw something new. All right, we really need to move on. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bit Trip uh, Runner here. You're an amazing game. You're, you're actually, I would argue, a better game than Bit Trip Core, at least for me. But I think we're going to move on. Oh, what is this? Is a spring? Oh! <laughs> I'm sad to go. But we, we really do need to go. I'm sorry, Bit Trip, dude. You keep getting more interesting and exciting. So cool. Oh, we missed that one though. Boom! There's like skull canyons in the background. Alright, we died. Yeah, how do I how do I quit this thing? <laughs> I just love the music too in the, in the intro screen. It's so cool. Anyway, back to the main menu. Yes, quit. This video is gonna be predominantly games other than the one I'm supposed to be playing today. I'm going so rogue, guys. The book is gonna be mad. A okay, bit trip beat! Yes, go ahead and play it. Um, <laughs> what the? Avoid missing some beats, tilt the Wiimote. Oh, is this a Wiimote game? I was hoping we could stick with the D-pad. Um, oh no, you just have to hold it and... Interesting. Oh, I love... The Bit Trip games are actually really interesting. Every single game is different from the last, which is kind of cool. And the title screen is showing you how to play the game. That is really neat. Oh, and you have to hit the ball. It's even, it's like training you. If you missed, you wouldn't understand how to play the game. Wow, uh, very cool. This actually, by the way, I think is a perfect use for the Wiimote. 
I've said many times I'm not a fan of needless motion or whatever, but I have also said one thing that is missing in modern controllers is a dial. Dials used to exist in arcades, in video games, in the Atari 2600 had dial controllers. You'd play Pong and uh, stuff like that. Um, so dials are very specific and precise way to control a game and there really is no modern way to do that however right now as i tilt the wiimote just tilting it up and down i'm moving the pong paddle this feels so good i'm so impressed by this this is a perfect use for the wiimote it is a pseudo dial but in fact i almost think this is better than a dial or at least no at least not noticeably different wow i i I, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm literally speechless. But yeah, anyway. This, this, you know what? The Bit Trip series. Here's what I'll say about the Bit Trip series. I've only tried three games so far, and I'm seeing a pattern. They're all sort of music-based. They all sort of capture that Guitar Hero feel without being Guitar Hero. They're like a reinvention of Guitar Hero, which again, you know, I didn't finish my thought when I was wrapping up the last game, but I kind of feel like... Maybe Guitar Hero wasn't as novel as we all thought, and the elements of Guitar Hero were there in all sorts of other games that we just didn't recognize them as rhythm games back in the day. Um, and that, that's not a condemnation of Guitar Hero, that's just me sort of recognizing, whoops, maybe I've been too hard on Guitar Hero, and maybe there's kind of much more to it than I ever thought. Man, I'm loving this rotation thing. I don't know. Um, here's here's my guilty confession for today as well, by the way. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to spell rhythm. <laughs> so I make notes for every game that I play. And I made notes for this game. I was sort of, you know, typing out arcade style rhythm game. And it's no, no surprise to me because I know this about myself, but I don't know how to spell rhythm. And uh, I always have to rely on spell check for the word rhythm. I always think it's R-Y. Like, okay, qu quick quiz. How do you spell rhythm? Do it in your heads. Spell it. Come up with the word rhythm. I challenge you. I, it's not an easy word. What do you think? R-Y-T-H-Y-M? That sounds rhythm? Okay, that's wrong. R-H... Oh god, I'm having to do this while playing a game. This is like the ultimate test of mental dexterity. R-H-Y-T-H-Y-M? That also sounds correct. Rhythm? No, it's R-H-Y-T-H... M. Did I just spell it while playing this horrible? I gotta look over at the thing. I think I spelled it right. It is. It is a beast. It has no vowels. Yeah, sometimes Y, I guess. But throw it. Throw a, a an I or something in there. I don't know. Rhythm is a beast. I don't know how to spell it. I just spelled it right for you guys once on camera. I'm gonna forget the next time I need to write it down in my life. I'm just no good at, uh, at rhythm, and I consider myself a reasonable speller. You know, I very rarely need to rely on spell check for most words. Rhythm? It's an effing nightmare, <laughs> that word. Anyway, so that, that was one other observation I had before starting today's uh, video here. Anyway, um, this has been Bit Trip Core. Technically, wink, wink, right? Nobody tell the book authors that I'm deviating. But uh, yeah, Bit Trip Core, you know, going back to it. Um, actually, should we go back to it? I, I guess we should. Let, let's go back and look at Bit Trip Core while we wrap up. Even though, honestly, I kind of feel like I'm having more fun with this Pong game, to be honest. I I was prepared to be unimpressed, but the Wiimote rotating is effing genius. It's it's just... it it, it, it I, I, I don't know. I, I'm at a loss for words. Wow, you even hit paddles back. Like, what an inventive combination of Pong and Guitar Hero. What an inventive combination. All right, let's go back to Bit Trip Core. All right, Bit Trip Core here is one of the games in the book, A Thousand and One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And I have to say, I have a little disagreement here, and here's the disagreement. After trying only three of the Bit Trip series games, I 100% agree with the intention of what the book authors were saying here. They were saying, go try Bit Trip. It is actually good. And it has this like crazy, authentic and genuine and honest uh, nostalgia factor. And, you know, you can you can just tell that the developers had a great love for the Atari that they grew up with. 100% agree with that. 100% agree. I think 
The Bit Trip series impressed me today. I I definitely want to play around more with this in the future, and I may come back to more Bit Trip games because this is the only one in the book, and that is where the book and I have a little disagreement. Oh God, I'm getting screwing up here. I don't think this one is the one that should have ended up in the book, frankly. If I can be totally honest. I don't think this is a bad game. But after trying two other Bit Trip games and just being, like, blown away, you know, maybe it's because I had no expectations because I played this one and was like, yeah, it's okay. It's a little lackluster. It's fine. Um, but after playing those other Bit Trip games, I'm like, wow, like, the Bit Trip series is ingenious. It's honest. It's genuine. It's nostalgic. It's all that stuff. I don't think this is the best one. This is definitely not the one that I, if I owned this back in the day, if I owned the, the bit trip complete thing that I've got now for the Wii, uh, I probably would play it, but I wouldn't play this one. This might be my least favorite bit trip one. I haven't played all the other ones, but uh, I can tell you this one is fine. It's almost too hard. This, this game I think would appeal if you're really into like DDR and stuff. Or maybe if you do consider yourself like a hardcore guitar hero guy, you know, the runner and the other stuff is going to be just too simple for you. And you're just going to be like, no, man, give me the hardcore stuff. I need the hardcore beat hero. And you're going to come and play this. So I don't know. Anyway, that's just my opinion. I mean, if you do like this bit, uh, bit trip game, then uh, it's no skin off my back. I just happen to think the other ones are more accessible, uh, more fun for me. Even the Pong one, I kind of liked more than this oh my god can you guys hear that it's my controller every time i get a dot it makes a beep it's actually really cool it sounds like an old handheld atari game or something like that so yeah i don't think the production value for this game is you know particularly low or they phoned it in or anything again that's not what i'm saying when i say that this is not my favorite bit trip game, but anyway. Anyway, that's my long, rambly, confusing explanation. What did you guys think of bit trip core here? Um, is it a game that you've played? What do you think of the other bit trip game? Should a different bit trip game have actually been in the book? Other than, oh, I thought it was dead. <laughs> I pulled my controller out. Oh God. Oh, we're still in it. We're still in it. Stay alive. Oh, we're dead now. Oh good, I'm dead. I can put my controller down. Um, should another bit trip game have been in the book? What do you guys think? And also, you know, I asked you those questions about how you think Atari games have held up. And what do you guys think is like the best looking Atari game? Again, for me, it's probably Pitfall or Frogger. But uh, anyway, we have a lot to talk about. So uh, I'm looking forward to reading your comments uh, down below. As always, whatever you think of this game, uh, hopefully today was interesting and entertaining for you. You learned a little bit. You laughed. You loved. Um, if that was the case, don't forget to like the video and all that jazz. And in the meantime, you all take care of yourselves, and I will see you guys soon. Alrighty, guys. Peace. We're going rogue. We're trying more bit trip levels. This is bit trip void. You gotta absorb black dots and avoid the white ones. I like how there's the distant sound of club beats in the background. It makes me feel like I'm uh, in a, a club bathroom trying desperately to hide. <laughs> oh, and I guess you can, like, shoot dots out of you? Hey, I understand this game less than the other games. Still like it more than Bid Trip Core, though. I gotta say. <laughs>